ובזה מפרשים מה דאמור בזוהר, and therefore we, um, um, you know, we understand from what's said in the Zohar about this very verse, ve'ele hamishpatim, the, the verse that opens this parsha, and these are the ordinances. Why, why does it says, say these are the ordinances? These are the ordinances of previous incarnations. Deep insights of the Slonimer Rebbe. Uh, if you have the book Netivot Shalom and you can uh, follow along with us, there's uh, there's the Netivot Shalom. If you can follow uh, uh, along with us, we are on uh, page uh, Kuf Samech Tet in the um, in the volume of the Book of Shmot, the Book of uh, Exodus. And uh, also to acknowledge that my uh, my partner Rabbi Eli uh, uh, Soifer wasn't able to make it today, so um, I'm going to be uh, here on my own with you together, never on my own, but certainly miss uh, Rabbi Soifer, and he will be back, God willing, next week. So. Here's here's the main question. The main question of this um, of this commentary and this uh, uh, dealing with Parshat Mishpatim is about uh, deals with truth, with the seeking of truth and the sanctity of truth. Uh, and in some ways, truth defines um, you know the Jewish enterprise, the Jewish project. It's it's really uh, you know when people ask ask me what is Judaism. Um, stand for, you know, what's sort of like the one, if you had to summarize the essence of Judaism and being Jewish um, in in one simple uh, word, you know, char- characterizing um, what a Jew is called for by Torah, by culture, by tradition, and that is to uh, seek truth. Parshat uh, Mishpatim, Mishpatim, means laws or ordinances. And uh, Parshat Mishpatim uh, starts by uh, really listing um, a long list of um, very, the minutia of uh, civic law, of damages, of, uh, you know, the sort of social contract, how people um, should get along with with one another. And if there are you know, if people are wrong one another, uh, what kind of, um, you know, how should those, or if they're, when there are disputes, how should those be settled? It starts with freeing a Hebrew slave and, uh, you know, what's involved um, with the details of that. It talks about um, uh, ca- capital punishment, um, about uh, murder by, um, you know, whether... Uh, uh, intentionally or, or by uh, by error, um, you know, and what are the consequences for that? Uh, uh, damages, there's uh, the famous uh, uh, sentence of uh, eye, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth is there, not to be taken literally. Uh, what happens if, um, you know, one person's animal causes damage to another person or to another person's property? What Let's happens? jump right into the astronomers and, and see, um, you know, I think you're going to really uh, enjoy the depth, the spiritual depth that um, he helps us glean from um, the simple and technical um, subject matter in, um, in this parsha. Ve'ele ha-mishpatim asher tasim lifnehem. And now uh, this is uh, the uh, the verses from, this is the very beginning of Parshat Mishpatim, and it's the verse that um, the Stonemer is going to uh, comment on. And these are the ordinances or laws that you shall uh, place before them. Hine parshiot elu itro u-mishpatim Ne Torah. 
Now notice that in the, these uh, portions of the Torah, uh, this one Mishpatim and the one before, um, uh, Itro, Neymar Parashat Kabbalat Torah, there was uh, the the receiving of the Torah at Sinai is, is described. In Itro, we it ends with the uh, uh, receiving of the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai, and the end of Parashat Mishpatim after the whole list of uh, of the technical laws and ordinances, it goes back to when Moses went up to the top of Mount Sinai with the tablets, received the tablets from God, etc. So, um, so, so he's noticing here that in Yitro there was the description of the whole process of uh, God's voice thundering out of the heaven and uh, giving the Ten Commandments and the people hearing it and the people uh, being, you know, enlightened as. You know, as it were, they all heard the voice of God, and they trembled, and they say, and they uh, um, uh, accepted. They said, "Yeah, we shall do, and we shall, and we shall listen." Um, and then it goes; it breaks with the beginning of Parashat Mishpatim. There's this whole uh, long list of, of uh, technicalities. And then it goes back to Moses going up to the up to the mountain. So it looks like there's a there's a um, there's a narrative, then there's a hiatus, and then there's back, it picks up where Yitro left, back to the narrative of receiving Torah from Sinai. Strange. And now we should um, understand why did the Torah pause in the middle of the story of the receiving of the Torah and the Ten Commandments and insert this um, you know the, this the, this list of, of mishpatim of of, um, of laws that God is going to place before them and we find that it's bro it's brought in the midrash, which is classical commentary Shmot Rabbah, um, on this book of Exodus, Ala Pasuk. And that midrash brings asks the same question and presents to us a verse from Psalms, Tehilim Kuf Mem Zayin, one hundred Psalm one hundred forty seven, and the verse says, Magid Dvarav Liyakov. God is um, telling God's words to Yaakov. God's laws and ordinances, Chukavu Mishpatav, the same word, Mishpatim, Mishpatav, Israel to Israel. Magid Varav Yaakov Elo Aserat Adibrot. The Midrash says that. The words he tells his uh, words to Yaakov, Midrash says, what are those words? Well, what is uh, the uh, psalm talking about? Those are the Ten Commandments. And why? There's the, lingui the, the, the linguistic connection. And, and so listen to this. Magid Dvarav, his words. Aseret Hadibrot, the Ten Commandments, which is actually... Um, the Ten Commandments is, is a misnomer. It's not a. It's an incorrect translation. What the Hebrew says is, "Aserat brought the ten utterances, ten words, right, or the ten verses, rather." So the Midrash is telling us when it says, "Magid Varav Yaakov," uh, God gives uh, Yaakov, Jacob, God's words or utterances. That's referring to the Ten Commandments. Chukav u'mishpatav l'Israel is chok is a law, mishpat is an ordinance, you could say. So, and here it's mishpatim, right, ordinances. Chukav u'mishpatav l'Israel, elu mishpatim. These are the laws that were given in this parsha, the parsha of mishpatim, of ordinances. U'mashma mizeh, u'miyod ma'amarei chazal ke'ein zeh, and we learned from this, and from other, um, Teachings by the sages. That these 
technical ordinances are on the same level of sanctity as the Ten Commandments. So says the Solomon, really? Well, we should then explore and try to understand what makes these dry, legalistic ordinances, technical ordinances, such a high level. It would seem that laws are, you know, they're, they're intuitive. Any society in the world has laws. I mean, laws define society. They structure society. Otherwise, it would be chaos, right? So what makes these, these laws, and especially these laws, you know, they're so, they're so technical. They're so like, uh, um, you could say, uh, uh, almost one could say that they're kind of, obviously, they're very important, you know, the issues of damages and murder and, 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 and property damages and conflicts and, and you know, all those sort of um, legalistic nitty-gritty are very important. It's not that they're, they're, not, they're not trivial. But are they sacred? And furthermore, the laws were given to Israel the utterances were given to Jacob. Now, we need to understand the difference. Jacob and Israel are the same person, right? Jacob was born as Jacob, and then he was renamed after his uh, wrestling with, uh, with the angel uh, before they're crossing the river back into the land of Israel. Um, so the angel, at the end of this uh, uh, dramatic episode, renames, give, gives uh, uh, Jacob his new name, and that's Israel. So Jacob and Israel are really the same person. So because Jacob was renamed, the, the name Israel is considered the sacred name, right? The spiritual name. Jacob was Jacob, Jacob Yaakov, was Jacob's name, by birth, by his parents. But the initiatory experience of the wrestling with the angel gives him the name Israel, which is a sacred name. So, you would have thought that the Ten Commandments, the utterances, are on a higher level, so they would have been given to Israel, to the sacred name. But no, they're giving to, to Yaakov. So this is the former, the more, you can, you can say, ordinary version of, of, uh, of Jacob. But it's the, the mishpatim, the ordinances, are giving to Israel the higher evolution of, of Jacob. So that's, that's instructive. Odom Chazal, this is in, from the Gemara in uh, Shabbat, um, page 10, כל דיאן שדאן דין אמת לאמיתו נאסא שותף לקדוש ברוך הוא במאסר בראשית. This is what the the Gemara says. Any judge that judges a truthful truth אמת לאמיתו. Now remember this truth, truthful truth because we're going to come back to it. Any judge that that um, that gives a verdict, verdict that is at the level of truthful truth, emet l'amito, nasa shutaf l'akadosh baruch hu, becomes a partner to um, to the Holy One, Blessed Be, b'maseh b'rashit in the um, in the act of creation. Shehemidu et adayan, shedan din emet l'amito. So, there's a certain simple, straightforward technicality to the, to the function of a judge. But here the Sonomar is pointing out that no, according to the Gemara, the Gemara is positioning the judge at a level where the judge can offer a true, a truthful, truthfully true judgment, emet la mito, which is such a high level of administering uh, uh, justice that this person becomes 
a partner with uh, with the creator of, of, of the world. So, <laughs> so the question is, what's going on here? What is what is what is the Torah trying to establish? Why why is this sort of almost mundane? People get along truthfully in justice, right? Have to do with being so elevated, like the words that the Ten Commandments that the people heard God's own voice roll out of the hem, rumble out of the heaven, and 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 it scared the you know the heck out of them, right? And they knew this was sacred, and this was this, this part of this experience, this ecstatic, uh, um, uh, um, otherworldly experience. But no, it's these ordinances, these simple ordinances in the parsha after, that are considered to be even higher than that, which the people hear from Moses. They don't hear it from God's word, right? Moses come and comes and reports it to them. It's the undramatic. That in this in this scheme in this um, in these uh, uh, commentary by by the sages are at a higher level than those ten commandments. The question is why. <laughs> so Solomon brings a um, a beautiful story here um, from the Baal Shem Tov, and uh, this is going to take us into a little bit of the depth. Of, uh, of thought and uh, kind of cosmological understanding that underpins um, this question. <laughs> and the meaning of the, of the term truthful truth we can understand the meaning of, of truthful truth from a story that's uh, brought about the, the holy Baal Shem Tov, may his memory be, uh, uh, illuminate us. So there was a person, a Jewish person, who uh, had a business dispute with somebody else. And they took the dispute to a great rab rabbi, to a, 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 to a judge. Um, way back when, in, you know, in, in, uh, especially in the shtetl in Europe, so um, Jews did not go for, um, you know, to, uh, mostly did not go to, to the um, uh, courts of the state or, you know, Christian court. And it turned out that this businessman was uh, lost the judgment. In other words, um, he claimed that he did not owe money to somebody else, and the rabbi decided, din Torah, through you know through his expertise in in um, you know looking at the laws of the Torah and the Talmud and precedent, etc., uh, decided that he lost his case, that he did have to pay this pay this debt. To the person he was uh, disputing the debt with, the, the, this person comes to the judge, to the to, uh, to, to the rabbi, and th says to him, "Look, I know that uh, Torah justice is true, and that Torah justice is sacred, and that you." administered uh, Torah justice and therefore I respect it you know if you said that using your expertise and your piety and your connection to to Torah and your connection to God to the sacred and you say that I owe the money so for me that's God's word I owe the money Aval but I for myself I know that I am right. You know that that the facts are that I do not owe this money. I know it. I know it like I know that the sun is 
שיינינג, יודע שלא כך היה מעשה, הוא באמת איני חייב לשלם לבעל דיני. He says, I know that, that in, in, in concrete reality this is not true. I do not owe, I do not owe this money. ואיך התיישבו שתי המיטות אלו כאחד? So how can it be that I believe in the judgment of Torah and the authority of God and the authority of you as a rabbi and therefore I accept it? That's one reality. But I also know the facts. <laughs> and I don't know how to reconcile those. How can I hold those two truths at the same time? Veshivlo, and the rabbi said to him, להווה ידוע לך שבגלגול הקודם נשארת חייב כסף לאדם זה, ולכן ירדת שוב לעולם הזה כדי שתפרע לו את החוב מן הגלגול הקודם. It is the case that in a, previ- in a previous reincarnation, in a previous lifetime, you owed money to this person. And that is why you came down again to, the, to this world, in order to uh, remedy that debt. והפירעון יהיה באופן שעל פי המעשה של עכשיו אינך חייב לו כלום, רק כדי לשלם החוב הקודם. And the way you're going to pay that debt is based on the facts right now you do, know, you do not owe this money, but you're having this dispute in order to allow you to rectify a debt from a previous, from a previous life. And that's why the, um, the judgment of Torah came out in this paradoxical kind of way. And therefore we, um, um, you know, we understand from what's said in the Zohar about this very verse, Ve'ele HaMishpatim, the, the verse that opens this parasha, and these are the ordinances. Din Raza de Galgulia. Why, why does it says, say these are the ordinances? It says these are the ordinances of previous incarnations. Shal pi Torah HaMishpatim nifraim kol hacheshbonot ben ish l'rehu al pi Raza de Galgulia. According to these ordinances, all previous unfinished business from previous incarnations are being settled. That is the meaning of a truthful truth. Truth means what is true, what, what is right according to um, the judgment of Torah. ולאמיתו שהוא מכוון על פי החשבון מרזה דה גולגוליה. And the truthful part is how it is uh, extends from what is unfinished from um, the secrets of uh, previous incarnations. Let me recommend that if you have the book you continue till the end. Uh, there's two more pages of commentary. But This is going to be a good place to summarize, and the question still um, stands, what then is so important about having truth that is true in fact, true at a greater order, say the greater order of, uh, of past and future lives, These are things that the law books probably don't, <laughs> uh, can't, can't uh, explain per se. And what is truth on a scale of, of different, different levels of, of um, maybe even infinite levels of, of, of order? So I'll just share a few thoughts and with the, the, that we're going to conclude. First of all, the simple beauty of this teaching is that, um, that truth is measured by how justice is administered in this very life, in the dealings that we have with one another. And that's the beauty of, of the Torah here. We're not going for 
Uh, the standard is not only the ten utterances that were given us in in the ecstasy of a um, of of, of a, you know higher higher consciousness uh, divine revelation. If it's not brought down and in, in, in anchored in in this world. Then, then, what's the value of the of the sacred moment? Then there's another another element, and that is the theory of relativity. What is really true? How relative is truth? How does truth, or how do facts look differently as our perspective, or the order or magnitude from which we're looking at that truth changes? And how do we seek, how, we, how do we continually seek for the greater truth? How do we continually seek to see our reality not only physical reality, but the reality of our relationships, the reality of um, of 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 meaning, the reality of um, relationships on on you know on escalating levels, you know from the personal to the family to the community, you know to uh, to neighborhoods to to to, uh, to different groups. The relationships between different traditions, between different communities, um, you know, the geopolitics, relationships be between nations and countries. How is the 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 search for greater and greater and greater truth empower a life of harmony, a life of the sacred, and ultimately? The ultimate truth, or what we call the truth of Torah, or the spiritual truth, is what we call God. And this is where mishpatim, the, the administration of truth, which leads to the practice of seeking of truth, and always a greater truth, is our spiritual work. And as the Salamur teaches, is what defines us as Jewish practitioners. May we so be blessed. Thank you so much for um, spending this time studying Torah on this Wednesday morning. Um, let's go out and meet the challenge honorably of seeking truth and administering justice. Shalom for now.